Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us here at KAKM for Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. Up first here, we've got some watches out, uh, coastal flood watches for Sunday afternoon and through Monday here for the Yukon Delta Coast, uh, Eastern Norton Sound, and the southern coast of the Seward Peninsula as a big intense storm moves into the northern Bering Sea during the day on Sunday that'll and the strong southwest winds that'll bring the potential for some coastal flooding high surf and beach erosion to all of these areas. Moving on to the satellite imagery a front moving through the southeast coast on into Canada another band of showers rotating up getting more scattered over the southern southeast coast but uh, upper level low and low both at the upper levels and the surface here in the Gulf of Alaska with a lot more showers that'll be rotating in later tonight and tomorrow into the Panhandle and uh, clouds and snow pushing up into the Copper River Basin today while activity diminishing over South Central Alaska. Just a lot of clouds, a few breaks up here over the Eastern interior, but uh, snow across the Tanana Valley with clouds and snow northward up to the Brooks Range and uh, some clearing gusty northwest winds here of 30 to 50 miles per hour across the Alaska Peninsula and uh, earlier from Kodiak Island extending up along the southwest coast and then a frontal system pushing eastward across the Bering Sea that spread some uh, brisk southwest winds uh, 20 to 30 miles an hour 15 to 30 miles an hour into the Perbloss with rain and fog this afternoon some of that moisture spreading down toward the eastern Aleutians, otherwise just a lot of clouds out to the west and another system back out here moving in toward Shimia during the afternoon. And we'll see that up to the north, a lot of this moisture circulating in from the east and southeast uh, produced a pretty good area of snow in the interior today from the Brooks Range here, central and eastern Brooks Range through the upper uh, Yukon Valley, Koyukuk Valley, all the way down into the Kuskokwim with uh, snow showers extending down and, and along and just to the west of the Alaska Range there. Scattered rain showers here over Bristol Bay, but again the gusty northwest winds blowing uh, again today, as I mentioned, with the strongest wind gust recorded at Cape Newenham, where earlier late this morning they had a gust to about 60 miles per hour. Low pressure in the Gulf of Alaska here and uh, showers and isolated thunderstorms, or actually numerous showers and scattered thunderstorms here along the southeast coast with uh, showers up along the North Gulf Coast to about Prince William Sound then they more or less cut off and moisture moving into the Copper River Basin brought snow today to Gulcana. But the uh, eastern upper Tanana Valley for the most part dry with temperatures running in the teens at Northway to near 30 up at Eagle. But uh, the snow back to the northwest here and then just some variable clouds back uh, up over the northwest interior. Eastern Arctic coast winds uh, 30 to 40 miles per hour in gusts there. Created some snow and blowing snow on the east side here with uh, visibilities down to one to two miles at times in some areas up there. Otherwise, we had some scattered showers from the Bering Strait down toward St. Lawrence Island. And looking uh, ahead for tonight, this system weakens, really just uh, troughs out here and spreads some moisture as it rides eastward on those westerly winds across the Bering Sea. So I'll bring a chance of rain, drizzle, or fog into Nunavak Island all the way down along the southwest coast and the Alaska Peninsula, which should be fair and windy here over Kodiak Island, dry up over the southwest interior and toward Norton Sound. 
scattered showers over the Bering Sea and the Aleutians and that next frontal system bringing wind and rain into the western Aleutians tonight with that low center hanging back to the west there but it'll be moving eastward over the next couple of days. Still have low pressure here over the Gulf of Alaska, southwest flow showers in the forecast for the Panhandle and that trough now rotating to just off the coast late tonight and early tomorrow. Otherwise, some moisture spreading up will keep some light snow at times over the Copper River Basin areas, possibly up toward the Northway and Toke areas, but amounts will be light and uh, continuous light snow or periods of light snow here across the Brooks Range area back to the western Arctic coast through the central interior and again down into the Cuscombe Valley to the western Alaska Range area. And then uh, for tomorrow, We'll see this low center still anchored there in the north, northern Gulf of Alaska, a little bit farther to the east, that trough swinging uh, in to the Panhandle. So rain and showers, uh, pretty unsettled weather there uh, for tonight and tomorrow, especially tomorrow as that trough moves in. Looks partly sunny here over south central Alaska, Kodiak Island, Kenai Peninsula, and possibly into Prince William Sound. Most of the shower activity should be from Cordova eastward, or hopefully east of Cordova into Yakutat. Still a chance of snow over the eastern Copper River Basin areas, eastern Alaska Range, as well as the interior areas here from about the Alaska Range north to the White Mountains, extending northwest. Look for some periods of light snow there in across the Kobuk, Selawag Valleys, all the way out to the northwest coast, and actually possibly as far north as about Wainwright, and then along that trough near and just to the north of the Brooks Range area. Looks uh, pretty snowy which should be dry with lighter winds along the eastern Arctic coast. Now out here to the west, uh, that front pushing eastward, a couple of low centers back out here over the northwest Bering Sea. That will bring some gale force winds with this uh, low center ahead of the front into the central Aleutians tomorrow, increasing wind and rain for the Perloff Islands there. Higher pressure dries it out over the Bristol Bay area, but enough moisture, the remnants of that uh, system coming onto the southwest coast tonight moves inland for some scattered or isolated uh, rain or snow showers over the southwest interior here. But uh, enough uh, moisture on this west-southwest flow will keep it mostly cloudy, but east of the Alaska Range should be some, possibly some pretty good sunshine tomorrow, that offshore northerly breeze. And then it looks like on Sunday, this low will move northward here. This one will stay in about the same position. This one will drop south, pulling a lot of cold air out of Russia and this will be pushing a lot of warm air northeastward. So both of those uh, things are going to act to deepen this low considerably. And it'll move off to the northeast to near St. Lawrence Island. And we've got a 960 millibar low, pretty intense system here up uh, over the northern Bering Sea with the center right around Gamble. Good southerly winds, uh, rain mixed with snow. The front driving inland uh, during the day, actually Saturday night and Sunday. Up here to the north could be some pretty gusty winds. We've got storm warnings across the Chuck CC here and the northwest interior areas. Uh, could see some blowing snow with those gusty winds and also uh, pretty gusty winds here, full gales along the, or whole gales here along the southwest coast with uh, looking at southwest winds at about 45 knots. And uh, rain with the warmer air pushing northward, looks like rain mixed with snow all the way up across the Seward Peninsula areas there back in toward the uh, Alaska Range area. Looks like some rain in especially along the southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula into western Prince William Sound and then heavier precipitation over western Cook Inlet and into the upslope areas of the western Alaska Range. And then uh, showers following in behind on Bristol Bay with pretty gusty winds all along the Alaska Peninsula with showers for Cold Bay on Alaska and then much colder air streaming southeastward out of Russia there into the western Bering Sea areas and uh, the leading edge of that cold air really behind this trough, uh, freezing levels drop behind the front and then the colder air freezing levels down to sea level following that trough axis in. Otherwise over the interior it looks pretty windy for the uh, central and eastern Alaska range, especially west of the Toke Highway. Probably see some pretty gusty winds there but dry with uh, possible clearing there all the way up onto the North Slope areas in the eastern Arctic coast, winds increasing significantly for the western Arctic coast and uh, about 20 knots there for the east side. Otherwise, uh, dries out here over the Panhandle, but still some lingering shower activity, but uh, pretty isolated, maybe some isolated rain and snow showers up there to the north, but basically a dry day coming up and then some clearing off the coast there will probably be shifting in late Sunday afternoon or Sunday night. 
Temperatures down across the southeast coast today, all in the 40s, uh, ranging from 44 at Juneau, 49 at Annette, otherwise Sitka had 44, 45 there at Yakutat, and back to the west and north Gulf Coast, lower to mid 40s, and then inland a little bit, Valdez at 36, 32 in Kenai this afternoon, but up 10 degrees from that at Homer, 45 in Kodiak, 34 at Talkeetna, and with the snow there at Gulcanis, 27 degrees, but Northway just 16. Otherwise, mid to upper 20s here across the Tanana Valley and into the Koyukuk Valley, mid 20s, 25 at Fort Yukon, 12 degrees in Anatovic, 23 at Arctic Village, Umiat there in the North Slope, Umiat Airfield, 19 degrees, 15 at Barrow with uh, lower to mid 20s here along the eastern Arctic coast and lower 20s uh, here for the northwest interior areas, but 32 at Shishmaref, Tin City and Teller. 33 at Nome this afternoon, 31 at McGrath, and out to the southwest there, mostly in the lower to mid 30s, all the way out to the coast. Aleutians all in the mid to upper 40s there with 48, the warm spot at uh, Atka, lower 40s for the Pribilofs, and upper 30s and lower 40s for the Alaska Peninsula on up into Bristol Bay. Lows for tonight, upper 30s and lower 40s for the southeast coast, otherwise 20s to lower 30s here over south central Alaska, and uh, Bristol Bay, mostly in the 20s across the Yukon Delta. Cooler as you head north to near 20 through the Tanana Valley. Teens up uh, from the Brooks Range and the Northwest Interior here, uh, all the way up to the Arctic Coast. Heights for tomorrow, not much of a rise there, all in the teens there for the North Slope Arctic Coast through the Brooks Range, 20s over the Central Interior areas to near 30 there at Nome with uh, 30s here over the Southwest, 40 Bristol Bay, in the 40s out to the west there along the Aleutians and also over the southeast panhandle. Flying weather uh, looks pretty good, uh, at least in the forecast for tomorrow afternoon here. Uh, VFR for the southeast coast are becoming VFR. A uh, patch of marginal conditions here persisting along the eastern Gulf Coast areas and also up here over the interior. Areas of marginal VFR along the central and eastern Arctic coast, but uh, Pretty good VFR, at least that's what was in the forecast or is in the forecast here all the way to Kodiak Island through the western interior, Bristol Bay, and then uh, moisture coming northward. Looks like marginal VFR from the central Aleutians right up into the Pribilof Islands, and this is all shifting up towards St. Lawrence Island throughout the day in the late afternoon and eastward toward Nunavak Island. Passes shaping up like this, Anatovic occasionally marginal. Adigan marginal VFR, Lake Clark and Merrill marginal becoming VFR tomorrow, rainy marginal VFR becoming VFR, and for windy, look for some possible IFR in the northern entrance, otherwise marginal, and Isabel starting out marginal becoming VFR, same forecast from Intasta, Tanita though, VFR the entire day, Portage VFR looking really good there, and Chilkoot and White starting out marginal becoming VFR. Freezing levels here at the surface right up into the Bering Strait, then southward down to uh, the Bristol Bay coastline, hugging the North Gulf Coast here across the northern panhandle. 2,000 feet up to the north here over the northern southeast coast, but south of Kodiak Island and back to the north over the Pribilofs. And with that strong southwest flow, a lot of warm air coming up toward the central Aleutians where you can see four to 8,000 feet. Icing threats uh, with that occasional Widespread moderate here in the orange area spreading up into the central Aleutians and up over the north central Bering Sea areas with a band of icing from St. Lawrence Island extending down into the southwest interior. Also some areas of uh, rime icing over the central interior back to the northwest there to the western Arctic coast and mixed icing here over the southeast coast mostly below about 9,000 feet. Winds aloft showing a good jet here right across the Bering Sea there up to 150 knots tomorrow and then taking a dive across Kodiak Island uh, at about 120 knots at, uh, let's see, 9,000 feet. Good southwest flow here, again, ahead of that front out here over the western areas. Front right through here, southwesterly is 35 to as high as 60 knots there, 45 knots over Atka, diminishing to 35 knots for the eastern Aleutians, but that flow right into the southwest coast. Easterly is 25 to 30 knots for the Arctic coast and west southwest, or yeah, west southwest release 10 to 15 over the interior. 
3,000 foot winds showing southwest flow continuing to pull those showers and clouds into the panhandle 15 to 20 knots tomorrow. Some west southwesterlies 15 to 25 through the central interior, but lighter the north swinging around to the east there along the Arctic coast at 25 to 30. And then southwesterlies at about 50 knots here from the central Aleutians right up toward the Pervolofs, taking a turn to the east and diminishing to 30 knots into Bristol Bay. Turbulence-wise, uh, occasional moderate chop here south coast of the Kenai Peninsula, back into Kamishak Bay, the Aleutian Range, southeastward across Kodiak Island, and then also with those uh, broad, strong southerly jet winds here into the central Aleutians, occasional moderate chop below about 6 to 8,000 feet, extending all the way up into the northeast Bering Sea, with increasing turbulence during the afternoon for St. Lawrence Island and the Yukon Delta Coast. After hangar flying, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor with the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. Thanks to Alaska Public Media and thanks to our viewers for watching Hangar Flying. This evening, we are honored to have on our show Ms. Jennifer Pianotti. Welcome to the Hangar Flying, and uh, we're very excited to have you. You are one of the co-founders of the Alaska chapter of Women in Aviation International, which just received provisional status. Congratulations. Thank you. So can you start off by telling us a little bit about Women in Aviation International? Sure. It's a nonprofit organization um, throughout the world, obviously, um, but we've got one chapter here in Alaska. It's the Last Frontier chapter. Uh, and the goal is to support women in aviation through things like networking, mentorship, education, and scholarships. And do um, you have a, a list of activities, or can you tell us what sorts of things that they do? Yeah, um, so we've, like you said, we've just started. We've just gotten provisional status. Uh, but once a month, we have a meeting for, it's for our members, but if anyone's not a member and interested, they're welcome to come, of course. Um, and it's part business, part social, and just getting together and meeting up with everyone. Uh, but the big things we do are we have recruitment events. We just had a Halloween party this past weekend, um, and outreach events. So we actually, on November 14th, uh, our outreach chair, Carol, has done a great job partnering with Penair and the Girl Scouts. Um, so we're going to have a day at the Penn Air Hangar where the girls can come learn about aviation, learn about different careers in aviation. Um, oh. So outreach is definitely a big piece. That's great. And obviously um, showing role models of women in aviation. Yes, definitely. Yep. Great. Can you tell us um, how much does it cost to join? Uh, to be an individual member, it's $45. They do have a student membership. If you're a high school or a college student, that's $32, and that's per year. And is the membership limited to just pilots? Nope. Uh, it's open to anyone in aviation. In our chapter, we have student pilots, commercial pilots, uh, dispatchers, aviation safety professionals, mechanics. Um, there are all different people involved in aviation. That's really great. I know a lot of other um, organizations focus on one particular occupation or trade or even gender. Are men welcome to join? Yes. Um, the organization is open to anyone who supports women in aviation. So men are absolutely welcome to join us. That's great. And are members required to attend meeting? Is there a lot of involvement that's required, or is it something that folks can do when they have the time and they're in town? Yeah, it's whatever you want it to be. Um, you're not required to come to a certain number of meetings or anything like that. Um, we do have our meetings once a month and then our events every couple of months um, and you can come to whatever you have time for if you want to help out in planning events you're welcome to if you just want to come to a meeting now and then and chat and see what's going on you're welcome to do that as well okay um, do you have any requirement for um, uh, the members to partake in any of the activities so if a person um, didn't have the time, they'd still be um, welcome? Yes, yeah, there's no requirement at all. It's whatever works for your schedule and what you're looking for. That sounds like a fantastic opportunity to, um, like you say, network, and maybe not even for people that are just looking for maybe jobs in the industry, 
but it could be ideal for somebody that's new in aviation or new in Alaska or Anchorage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got uh, quite a few student pilots in the organization, um, some fixed wing, some helicopter, um, and it's a good opportunity for them to come and talk to other pilots and you know, get support as they go through the flight training and that sort of thing, get to meet people, start to feel like a part of the aviation community. And I know you had a Halloween party, as you mentioned, and that was a great um, recruiting tool. Yes. So people could have a very informal um, way of meeting other potential members. Do you know, are there going to be other activities like that planned in the future? Um, there will be. We don't have the next one scheduled just yet. Um, we had talked about doing something around Christmas, but I think it might be a little bit crazy. Um, so sometime early next year, we'll have another, we'll definitely have another event to invite the community in and get to know us as an organization. Okay, and for people that are looking to find out more information about the organization, how they might be a member, or even where they might um, attend a meeting and find out if that's the right thing for them, where would they find that information? Um, so they can go to the uh, Women in Aviation International website, which is wai.org, um, or they can contact us um, at our email address, wai.ingridge.gmail.com, um, and just say, hey, I want to find out some more. Um, you're always welcome to come to our meetings, even if you're not a member yet. Uh, they're the second Monday of every month from 6.30 to 7.30, and they're usually at the SkyTrack hangar in Merrill Field, um, but I would suggest anyone who wants to come send us an email and just make sure, because once in a while it'll move around. Okay. Thank you so much for chatting with us, Jenny. We appreciate the information about Women in Aviation International, and it's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Thank you. We look forward to have Jen having Jenny back on the show next time, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about what she's done with her career. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to Hangar Flying, and fly safely. Welcome back, looking at the sea ice analysis today, showing the growing ice here along the western Arctic coast and some new and young ice here, Kotzebue Sound, and to a lesser extent there over uh, Norton Bay. And the forecast here for the Chukchi Sea is uh, for winds uh, to become, or to continue mostly from the north and northeast, and especially next week when that big storm pulls through, we should see the ice edge start to advance uh, west and southwest, 20 to 40 nautical miles. And for the coastal waters here, for the panhandle, southwest, 20 knots. Otherwise, we've still got some small craft advisories in the forecast for Clarence Strait from the southeast, and then southerlies of 15 for northern Lynn Canal. And for Sunday, southwesterly winds, 15 to 20 knots, more of a southerly direction along the north coast. And actually in the afternoon through here, this will probably become southerly as well. Pretty light winds from the south and southeast here over all of the inside waters with slight seas of 2 to 3 feet, but running 10 to 13 feet out here along the coast. And for the uh, north Gulf Coast tomorrow, small craft advisories, northwesterlies 25 to 30 knots, northwest 20 with higher gusts for Prince William Sound, and south of the Forelands here, northwest 25 knots, and then gales in the forecast for Kamishak Bay across the Barren Islands as high as 45 knots, northwest 40, diminishing in the afternoon there for the east side of Kodiak Island. Then for Sunday, southwesterly is 30 knots here, both Shelikoff Strait and onto the east take, uh, become more southerly there for the Barrens. Southeast at 30 knots for Kamishak Bay, northeasterly is 15 to 20 for Prince William Sound, northeast and, or for Cook Inlet, northeast also for Prince William Sound at 15 and small craft advisories for the western Gulf Coast. And for Bristol Bay tomorrow, west at 20. Otherwise, small craft advisories, westerly winds here for the Alaska Peninsula with 10-foot seas and a little bit stronger as you approach uh, Sitkanak. For Sunday, got gale warnings here. Bristol Bay southwesterly is at 35 knots, seas building to 14 feet. Westerly winds here on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula at 40 knots with 22-foot seas. Small craft advisories, west winds from Cape Sarachev all the way up to Sitkanak with seas 15 feet. And for the eastern Aleutians tomorrow, uh, southwesterlies 25 to 35 knots in that area. And then ahead of that front, uh, gales to uh, strong gales here for the central Aleutians, 40 to 45 knots. 
and then gale force winds, minimum gales out here to the west uh, towards Shimia. And for the outlook for Sunday, uh, pretty good gale westerlies here, especially into the central Aleutians, 35 to 40 knots. And then we're looking at 35 to 45 knot winds out of the west for the eastern Aleutians with seas running in the uh, 22 to 25 foot range there on the Bering Sea side of the islands and about 16 to 18 feet there to the south. For the southwest coast, north of Nunavak Island, southerly 25 knots, winds easterly at 20 for St. Lawrence Island, and then some good gales coming into the central Bering Sea, south 40 here for the uh, St. Lawrence Island, St. Matthew Island area, southwest increasing to 35 knots there for the Kerbaloffs, and then on Sunday with that big storm uh, moving up to St. Lawrence Island, uh, high-end gales here all along the coast, uh, southwesterlies of 45 knots, westerlies of 45 knots for the Kerbaloffs, all the way up to St. Matthew Island, south 40 there for St. Lawrence Island. And then for the uh, forecast for tomorrow here for the eastern Arctic coast, easterlies 20 to 25 knots, more northeast there on the central coast, but generally east to northeast at 25 all the way down to Cape uh, Thompson. Wales to Cape Thompson northerlies at about 20 with heavy freezing spray. And for Sunday, we've got those storms here, east 50 knots from Wales to Cape Thompson, gales there from Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort, easterlies at 35 knots. Small craft advisories here for the western Arctic coast with heavy freezing spray all through these areas. Lighter winds, but still easterly there for the eastern Arctic coast. And for tonight, stay showery there over the southeast coast, snowy through the central interior. A little bit of moisture reaches the southwest coast. And then for uh, tomorrow, we'll see a developing system out here over the Bering Sea, which uh, develops into a pretty intense storm. And it's uh, out there over the northern Bering Sea with a lot of wind and precipitation moving inland. Have a great weekend. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.